My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, after 13 years of being persecuted in Mecca, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the trials that he faced with his companions, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, from the Sahaba were the ones who were tortured, and from them were the ones who were even killed. And they tried to kill our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of this because they said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. Their own people, their own relatives, who are putting in through these difficulties. All because of the, their belief with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After these difficulties, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up the doors for the Muslims. And the first Islamic state was established in Medina. But the difficulties continued. Alhamdulillah became easier. But they still faced a lot of difficulties. After being victorious in the Battle of Badr, the Muslims were defeated in the Battle of Uhud. Our own Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that day, he was hit several times in that battle. So much so that his tooth was broken. And that the metal from the helmet went into his face, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he was hit by a sword so hard on his head that the helmet broke on his head, alayhi salatu wasalam. Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, have you ever found a day more difficult from your people? Because who's coming to Medina to attack him? The people of Quraysh, his own people. The people who used to call him a sadiq al-ameen. The truthful one, the trustworthy one. She said, did you ever find a day more difficult from your people than the day of Uhud during this battle? And he said, yeah, Aisha, I found a lot from your people. And he suffered a lot. Allah had a lot of difficulty from your people. From the people of Quraysh. He said, but the most difficult day I had was the day of the Aqaba. And that was the day when he went to spread the message of Islam after his own people in Mecca rejected him. He went to spread the message of Islam to the people of Taif. And out of, out of an act of disrespect to the Prophet wasallam, the people of Taif didn't even listen to him. The noble people refused to even listen. They sent out to him the sufaha, the low class, the low lives, the trash from the society, along with the little kids. Sent them out to tease the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to curse him alayhi salatu wa sallam, and to throw rocks at him. So much so that all of the rocks hitting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he started to bleed until his sandals became filled with blood sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of this so he can spread the message of Islam, ya khwan. This difficulty he's going through, he leaves the people of Taif and goes a long distance just walking, concerned about how he's going to spread the dawah. Jibreel alayhi salam comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah sends Jibreel to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Muhammad, I have with me Malak al-Jibal. I have the angel of the mountains with me. And if you want, just give the word. And the angel, the, the Malik of Jibal, the angel came and said, just give me the word, Ya Muhammad, and I will close alayhim the akhshabain, the two mountains. He will go to the people of Mecca and close the mountains upon them and crush them and destroy them. These people who are rejecting the message, people who are rejecting the haqq, will destroy them right now. Just like the nations before them were destroyed. Just give me the word. Allah has sent me here today. You just give me the word. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say to him? What would you have said to him? Think about that. People who are harming you, harming your family, killing your companions, torturing your companions. What would you do if you had the ability to have them all destroyed? Subhanallah. Us today, 
if somebody looked at us wrong, just gave us a dirty look, somebody didn't return our salams, somebody cut us off as we're driving down the street, we'd say, kill him! Kill them all and his family. He deserves it. He doesn't have a khlaq, a'udhu billah. Let him die. Get revenge. But what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? He said, La, la'alla Allah yukhrij min aslabihim man ya'bud Allah wa la yushrik bihi shayha. Perhaps Allah will send forth from their offspring somebody who worships Allah and doesn't join partners with him. No, don't destroy them. Look at the rahmah, the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah says, and we did not send you, O Muhammad, except for as a mercy to all of mankind. Look at this mercy. The companions, when they were going through this difficulty, they went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, make dua on the mushrikeen. Make dua to Allah that Allah will destroy them. Allah will harm them, just like they're harming us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَمْ عُبَاثْ لَعَانًا وَإِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ رَحْمًا Subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I was not sent as somebody who invokes on others, who curses others. I was sent as a rahmah, as a mercy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a mercy to mankind. When the Islamic State was established in Medina and the Muslims had strength. The state was spreading out, becoming stronger. The Prophet wasallam sent some of the Sahaba on a patrol, on a mission. And as they're doing their job, they come across somebody and they look. And I want you to imagine before I continue in the story, some of the people who harm Rasulullah in the days we live in. Some of these people who draw these evil cartoons about our Prophet Some of these evil people who talk dirty and negatively about our beloved Prophet Imagine if you were to find them and you got the upper hand. You're deep. You and a lot of the Muslims and he's just, him maybe a few people. What would you do to them? The Sahaba found a man by the name of Thumama ibn Uthal. Ibn Uthal. And Thumama, from the city of Umama, was the leader of his people. And somebody very important. And he hated Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he did everything in his power, in his will, to harm Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he used to talk very dirty and very negative about our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here he is, with no guards, going to Mecca. The Sahaba found him, took him as a prisoner right away. And they bring him to the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The people are in shock. Thumama. <laughs> the one we hear about, harming Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Talking negative about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here he is, tied up as a prisoner, in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now what would you do in this situation? Think about that. Here he is, the enemy, right in front of you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, tie him up in the masjid. Where? In the masjid. And I'm Muslim, in the masjid. Sometimes we bring people to the back. Say, okay, brother, haram. You bring a non-Muslim into the masjid, okay, haram. Taqillah, it's masjid. Najis, najis, kafir. Huh? This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, tie him up in the masjid. On one of the pillars. Mm -hmm. And be good, be kind to Thumama. Take care of him. Give him good food. Take care of him. So they were giving him good food. They were taking care of him. And what is he doing? He's watching Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam interact with the companions. He's hearing the Quran being read from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the salat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he goes up to Thumama and he said, ah, What do you say, Ya Thumama? And basically, what do you think I should do with you? Now, here's a man, he, he's at a weak place now. He's strong in his people, but he's tied up. He's a prisoner of war. But that didn't hold him back from being bold and being proud of who he was. He said, if you kill me, he said, beware that I'm somebody important for my people. Hey, 
Beware that it's going to be war between my people and your people if you harm me. That's what he's saying. So if you're going to kill me, know that I'm somebody important. And if you free me, I'll be thankful. And if it's money you want, name your price because I got money. He's rich. Three things. Nothing else to say to you. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he left. Left him for an entire day. Came back the next day. Said, hi, Uthamama, what do you think? He said to him, if you're going to kill me, then you're going to kill somebody who's important. And if you forgive me, you're going to forgive somebody who's thankful. And if you want money, name your price. The same three things. The Prophet ﷺ left him. And he came back the third day. He said, Anta Mama, what do you think? And he repeated to, the, to Rasulullah ﷺ the same three things. Same stance, didn't change. The Prophet ﷺ said to the Sahaba, let him go. Let him go. The enemy of Islam. And the, the Sahaba, they're shocked. And let's eat, at least get some ransom for him, benefit something. If we're not going to, you know, he's not going to be executed. He's not going to be, because that's what they want to do. They want to harm the person who's harming Rasulullah Sallallahu But look at Rasulullah Sallallahu the rahmah, the mercy to mankind. He said, let him go. A little while later, Thumama comes back to the masjid. And he stands in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba and he says, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu annaka Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I bear witness that, you, that there's no deity worthy of worship except Almighty Allah and that you are the messenger of Allah. He enters into Islam. And then he says, Ya Muhammad. He said, before there was no face, no person more hated to me than you and no face that I hated more than your face. And no religion that I hate it more than your religion. And he said, and there was no city that I hate it more than your city, the city of Medina. He hated Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so much, and Islam so much, that he even hated the city of Medina. He said, but now, Wallahi, you become the most beloved person to me. And your face has become the most beloved face to me. <coughs> and your religion, the religion of Islam, has become the most beloved religion to me. And your city has become the most beloved city to me. Because of the rahmah, the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he dealt with him. When the eighth year of the hijrah came and the Muslim state had become very, very strong and they came time to take over Mecca. The last stronghold before Taif and some other areas but the major stronghold for the shirk, for the polytheists, the mushrikeen. When they came to conquer Mecca, the Prophet Sallallahu when he gathered them around, said, what do you think I'm going to do with you? Now pay attention. These are the same people who tried to kill him, who tortured his Sahaba, <coughs> the same one who tortured his companions and killed some of his companions. Here they are in front of him. It's time for revenge now. You came and you attacked Medina how many times? Time for all of you to die, right? That's what some people would think. It's revenge time. But what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? He said, Idhabu fa antum tuluqa. Go, because you're freed. All of you are free. He freed them. Rahmah. A mercy to mankind sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in today's khutbah, we just talked about the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with non-Muslims. And if I want to sit here today and talk about his life with his companions and even with the animals and how he was merciful with every, every aspect of his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wallahi, we would stay here till Moghrib, till Isha, and we wouldn't get up. His life is full of rahmah. And we have not sent you except for us as a source of mercy to mankind. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And look at these actions. With the non-Muslims. Pay attention to that. Well, like some of our scholars said something very beautiful. Very beautiful. They said, if we as Muslims were to just take the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in dealing with the non-Muslims. Pay attention. The mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in dealing with the non-Muslims and implement it between ourselves as Muslims. Not his whole rahmah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in all the aspects of, of his life. Just the rahmah that he had with the non-Muslims. 
and implement it between ourselves in our everyday lives, they say, SubhanAllah, our Islam would be at a whole other level. Our societies would be at a whole other level. We would feel so good inside because of spreading that rahmah between the society and between all of us. Become true brothers in Islam if we were just to implement the rahmah that the Rasulullah had with dealing with the non Muslims. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, one of the Bedouins came to visit Rasulullah in Medina. And as you know, the people who are from the desert, they live in a tough and rough environment. So their nature is they're tough and rough in their nature as well. He saw Rasulullah kissing either Hassan or Hussein, one of his grandchildren, kissing him. And he was shocked. He said, you kiss your children? Hassan said, of course. He said, I have 10 children, I've never kissed one of them. Looks at it as something's negative. If you're a man, you're tough, you shouldn't kiss your children. What did Rasulullah say to him? He said, Man la yarham, la yurham. Whoever doesn't have mercy, there will be no mercy given to him. Rasulullah he said to us, That those who have mercy will receive mercy from a Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, have mercy upon those who are on the earth and the one who is in the sky, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy upon you. A command from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to reflect on this reality when we go home today. The mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he dealt with people in all aspects of his life when he dealt with his children, when he dealt with his companions, when he dealt with his wives, when he dealt with Muslims, non-Muslims, in all aspects of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was rahmah. In every aspect of Islam, wallahi is rahmah. Go home today and reflect on the sharia. Reflect on Islam and you'll find wallahi every single source is a source of rahmah. Everything in Islam is a source of rahmah. All you need to do is reflect on it. Anything. Alcohol is haram. Why? Well, it's a rahmah. It's a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to have a circumcision as a Muslim man. Oh, what is the benefit in that? Look at the benefits in that. Reflect on that. Look at the rahmah of Islam. Subhanallah. Even in things that look difficult to people. Penalties. When people are put to death. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about the qisas? وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاسِ حَيَاءٍ that there's life, gives life. These penalties, when they're implemented, it's life, gives life. But how is this to be done? How Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do it. Look at the rahmah in all of his actions. And that's why, if you were to, to reflect on some of the things you see, some of the different methodologies and ideologies that you see, and the actions of certain people in the name of Islam, and then you look at the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you know this is not from Islam. Look at the rahmah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he dealt with the people. We need to revive this rahmah in our everyday lives, in our workplaces. Are you the boss? Are you in charge? Are you an employee? Whatever you are, there has to be the rahmah between us. Dealing with Muslims, dealing with non-Muslims. The Muslim, that's your brother. He has a big right upon you. And the non-Muslim as well. Let the non-Muslim see the rahmah of the Muslimin, the mercy of the Muslims. When they implement and act like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See how subhanAllah, look at the beauty of Islam. They'll see the beauty of Islam through the rahmah, the mercy of the Muslims and the actions of the Muslims. My dear brothers, when you go home today, ask yourself a question. Do you want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you want Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, to be merciful with you? The only way to achieve that, the only way to gain that, the Rahmah, the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is being merciful towards the creation, like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thumma alamu rahimah illahu wa iyaakum anna Allah qad amarukum bi amr. Bada bihi bi nafsihi thumma thanna bi malaikati al-kiram. 
فقال عز وجل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما ويقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى عليه بواحدة صلى الله عليها بعشرة اللهم صل وسلم وأنعم على نبينا محمد وعن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وسائر الصحابة أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اللهم أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها ربنا إننا ظلمنا أنفسنا ولم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم يا رحم الراحمين أرحمنا برحمتك يا رب العالمين وجعلنا من الراحمين يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقيم الصلاة يحمكم